The Jack Benny Program, presented by Lucky Strike. Quality of product is essential to continuing success. At 58, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco, so round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. LSMFT, LSMFT, LSMFT. Right you are. Yes, sir. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco, and fine tobacco means real deep down smoking enjoyment for you. Yes, it takes fine tobacco to make a fine cigarette. And year after year, at market after market, the makers of Lucky Strike consistently select and buy that fine, that light, that naturally mild tobacco. Fine, light, naturally mild tobacco. Yes, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. And fine tobacco means real deep down smoking enjoyment for you. So smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. The Lucky Strike program, starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. Ladies and gentlemen, last Sunday, Jack Benny started his 15th year in radio. All week long, he's been receiving letters and telegrams of congratulation, and his friends in Hollywood have been constantly calling him. So now let's go out to Jack's home in Beverly Hills where we find him talking on the phone. Well, I... Well, I... Oh, it wasn't that good. Uh, What? Oh, Ingrid. (laughs) You're so kind, and coming from you, it's it's a great compliment. You know, Ingrid, praise is the lifeblood of an actor, so, uh... Thanks for the transfusion. (laughs) Well, thanks so much for calling. It was so sweet of you. Uh, By the way, Ingrid, I hope I'm not being too presumptuous, but uh, may I... uh, May I take you to lunch Thursday? I may? Oh, no, no, Ingrid. I won't forget. Goodbye. Oh, Rochester. Yes, boss? Uh, mark this down. Lunch Thursday with Ingrid Krausmeyer. <laughs> At uh, one o'clock. Is that Krausmeyer, boss? Yeah, she works at Republic. She's in charge of the saddles. <laughs> <laughs> well, I certainly feel happy getting all these telephones. Oh, there it goes again. Oh, well, that's the price of fame. Hello? Yes, this is Mr. Benny. Well, well, thank you. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Another one of my fans. You know, Rochester, I appreciate people calling me up and telling me how good I was, but it can get a little annoying. You didn't have that trouble with the horn blows at midnight. (laughs) You can kid all you want to, Rochester, but that picture will go down in history. It sure will. That's the first thing Romico ever walked out on. (laughs) Well, Romico walked out on that picture because he doesn't understand English. His interpreter was leading him. (laughs) All right, all right. And Molotov was right behind him. Right. (laughs) That's enough. I'm going into the library. Oh, darn it. Sometimes I wonder if it's worth all this. Hello? Yes, this is Mr. Benny. What? I mailed that yesterday. (laughs) Oh, yeah? Well, you can't disconnect it while I'm talking on it. What? You're up on the pole now? (laughs) Well, put away those snippers and get down from there. I told you I mailed it. Mm, How do you like that? Rochester, do you know there was a man up on the telephone pole? You mean Sam? Oh, you know him? Sure, he goes up there first of every month. (laughs) Say, Rochester, what time is it? It's about a quarter to 11. Good, the World Series will be on pretty soon. I want to hear it. I'll listen to it in the... Oh, there goes that phone again. You answer it, Rochester. Tell him I'm not at home. Yes, sir. Hello? (laughs) No, I'm sorry, but Mr. Benny's not at home. Who? Thank you, I'll tell him you called. Who was it, Rochester? It was Ingrid Bergman this time. What? Give me that phone. Hello? 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 
Not you, and get down off that pole. <laughs> Hello? Hello? Hmm. Rochester, why didn't you call me? You told me to say you were out. Hmm. Just wait till you get a call. But, boss, okay. you told me to say you... Never mind what I told you. You should know if I'll talk to Krausmeyer, I'll talk to Bergen. <laughs> I'm going into the other room and listen to the World Series. Okay. And Rochester, early this morning, I put in a long-distance call to New York, so plug the phone in the library. Yes, sir. Gee, I wonder if St. Louis will win the... Well, I'll know pretty soon. I'll answer it, Rochester. Take back your rumba, aye, your samba, aye, your conga, aye, yay, yay. Hello, Jack. Well, hello, Mary. Come on in. You're just in time. I'm going to listen to the World Series. The World Series? Who's playing? Boston against Ingrid Bergman. I mean, Boston and St. Louis. <laughs> Come on in the library. Say, Jack, did you read the wonderful things the critics said about your opening program? Well, no, Mary. After all, I've been on the air for 15 years, and I feel that when I have a show to do, I just go out and do the best I can, and I don't concern myself with what the critics say. Then why have they got the reviews pasted on your glasses? <laughs> Those are the lineups for today's game. I want to have them handy. Well, the game ought to be on pretty soon. Oh, Jack, before I forget it, I got a letter from Mama yesterday. Your mother? Well, what did the truculent turtle of Plainfield have to say? <laughs> she mentioned your first broadcast, and she liked it very much. She did? Your mother? That sweet little gray-haired old lady who fractured your father's skull <laughs> like my father? <laughs> Yeah, and she even took the bandages off so Papa could hear it. Well, well, that was nice. And Jack. Yeah. <laughs> what is it, Mary? Oh, Mama was so cute. She said she was preparing dinner when she listened to the radio, and while your program was on, she peeled four pounds of onions. Oh, fine, listening to me and peeling <laughs> onions. Mama said she was laughing on the inside and crying on the outside. <laughs> Hey, that's pretty good. But you know, Mary, if your mother thought last week's show was something, wait till she hears the one we got for this week. But, Jack, how do you get your scripts if your writers are still stranded on the gambling ship? I sit on the beach and they wigwag them to me. <laughs> the scripts are over there on the table, Mary. You better take a look at them. Okay. Just brush the sand off. Let's see, I, uh... I wonder what station the World Series will be on. It should be around... Oh, for heaven's sake, Jack, I'm not gonna do this gag here. Where? Right here on page three. It's too corny. Mary, that's a topical joke, and we have to do that kind of stuff. I don't care if it is topical. I'm not going to say that you have to go out with a girl in Brooklyn because you can't dodge her. <laughs> <laughs> dodger, don't you get it, Mary? That, the Brooklyn Dodger, that's a baseball joke. Well, I'm not going to do it. All right, all right. If you don't want the gag, I'll give it to Dennis. He'll be very happy with it. Dennis is happy if he looks in a mirror and he's there. <laughs> Look, Mary, I don't want to discuss it now. The game will be on pretty soon. I want to listen to it. Okay. Say, wait a minute, Jack. What's that black crepe on your radio for? Fred Allen comes back on the air today. <laughs> <laughs> he does? What time? We light the candles at 5.30. <laughs> well, we still got a few minutes before the game. Let's get some music anyway. <laughs> get the ball game. I wonder who's going to pitch for St. Louis. Look on your glasses and see. Oh, yeah. 
Well, they have Paulette's schedule, but then you never can tell. Oh, there goes the phone again. Mary, it's been like this all week long. Congratulations, compliments. I've never seen anything like it. Hello? Yes, this is Mr. Benny. Well, thank you. Thank you very, very much. Goodbye. Who was it? There'll be a two-hour delay on my call to New York. <laughs> well, don't let it go to your head. They say that to everybody. Yes, but the way she said it, I knew she liked my program. Oh, Rochester, uh, Ro do me a favor, will you, please? Yes, boy. Uh, pick up these scripts and put them in my briefcase. I don't want to forget them when I go to the studio. Yes, sir, I'll put them right next to your Christmas card samples. Good, good. <laughs> Say, Jack, uh, when I was looking through the script before, I didn't see a commercial. I know, Mary, and I don't know what to do about it. Don Wilson got me to hire that lousy quartet and put him under contract for eight weeks at $500 a week. For $500, all they did was, hmm. Imagine four big jerks going, hmm. And one bigger jerk paying them. Well, why don't you break their contract? I don't know how. Well, how did Warner Brothers do it to you? <laughs> they didn't break my contract. They just burned down my dressing room. I'll never forget the look on Jack Warner's face when he found out I wasn't in it at the time. <laughs> and when do you think they... No, oh, there's a phone again. Hello? Yeah. Well, thank you. Thanks very much. And you also like me on Dennis Day's program? Well, that's awfully sweet. Goodbye. Who is that? Dennis. <laughs> He's coming over here pretty soon. Well, it's almost time for the World Series. I might as well try and... Hey, Jack, look out the window. Here comes Don Wilson with that quartet. Oh, yes. I wonder what they want now. Come in! Hello, Jack. Hello, Mary. Hello, Hi, Don. Hey, Jack, look who I brought with me. I know, I know. Hello, fellas. <laughs> That's what I mean. Don, I'm glad you brought the quartet over. I want to talk to you about them. What's wrong? What's wrong? I'm not going to keep paying $500 a week just to hear them go, hmm, during a commercial. Well, Jack, at the end of our show last week, when you kicked me in the stomach, I suspected you weren't quite satisfied. You bet I wasn't satisfied. I'm not going to pay $500 for a quartet for one note. And another... No, Jack, Jack, calm down. Calm down. I've got it all fixed up now. That's why I brought the boys over. Now, here's the way we're going to do our commercial today. Look, Dan, I don't want these Just fellas... listen to this, Jack. Listen to it. Now, I'm sure you'll like yes, it. Yes, Jack, give them a chance. All right, all right. Now, here's the way we'll do it. Get set, boys. Here we go. L.S. M.F.T. L.S. M.F.T. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Yes, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. L.S. L.S. M.F.T. La 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 la. He he he. L.S. L.S. M.F.T. La 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 la. Go round. Down. That's not what I want. Go free and easy on the draw. That's not what I want. L.S. M.F.T. La 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 la. He he he. L.S. Oh 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 oh. That naturally mild tobacco. Don. So for real deep down Don. smoking enjoyment, it's LS La La Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Say, I mean, what kind of a commercial do you call that? I mean, what's the matter with you guys? <laughs> Look, Don, listen to me, will you please? Will you please listen to me? Yes, sir. Now, just once. Look, Don. Can't you understand that isn't what I want? That's corny. Five hundred dollars. Well, I can get a better singers out of Ellis Island. What island? Ellis. 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 
And Mary, you didn't have to trick me into that. <laughs> now listen to me, Wilson. This is all your idea, not mine. And if you think for one minute that I'm going to... Hello? <laughs> yes? Thank you. Thanks very much. It was so nice of you to tell me. Goodbye. Now, Wilson, if you think for one minute that I'm going... Who is that, Jack? It's only an hour delay now. Don, if you think for one minute that I'm going to be stuck with this quartet, you're crazy. And to show you I mean what I say, I know how to break their contract. Jack, put down those matches. <laughs> I can't help it, I'm mad. Oh, boss, if you want to hear the World Series, it'll be on pretty soon. Okay. Thanks, Rochester. The World Series... Jack, do you mind if we stay and listen? I guess not, Don. Now, let's see... I think the game comes over station. Hello? That's the door buzzer. Oh. <laughs> Come in. Oh, hello, Dennis. Hello, everybody. Look, Jack, Dennis brought his father with him. Hmm. Imagine him coming here in his old greasy overalls. How do you do, Mr. Day? That's my mother. She just came from work. <laughs> oh. How do you do, Mrs. Day? How do you do? <laughs> now, remember, Mother, you promised you wouldn't hit him. Hit me? Yeah, there's something about you that brings out the beast in her. Now, Mrs. Day, I don't know what you have in mind, but I'd like to talk to you some other time. Right now, I want to listen you to... You the... listen to me first. All right, and put down that wrench. <laughs> now, what is it? Well, Mr. Benny, now that my Dennis is a star on his own show, you must uphold his dignity by giving him more lines, more songs, his own dressing room. And at all times, he must be treated with the utmost respect. Yeah, utmost. <laughs> now, look, Mrs. Day. Now, you listen to me. You can run Dennis's life if you want to, but you're not going to run mine. Gee, Mr. Benny, my father wouldn't dare talk to her like that. Your father. What a weakling he must be. Where'd your mother ever get him, anyway? Eastern Columbia, Broadway at night. <laughs> Gee, they have everything. <laughs> now, Mrs. Day, look, I don't want to talk any more about it, and that's settled. All right, if that's the way you feel about it, come on, Dennis, we'll go home. Dennis stays right here. I want to hear the song he's going to do on my program. Very well, but I'm leaving. I'll wait for you outside, Dennis. Goodbye! <laughs> hmm. Gee, she's a character, isn't she? <laughs> I'll say she is. Now, go ahead, Dennis. I want to hear the song you're going to do. Okay. I have trouble with everybody.
very, very good, Dennis. Uh, by the way, uh, you just recorded that number, didn't you? Yes, sir. Well, well, it's swell. Now, we're going to listen to the World Series, kid. You want to stay? No, I better run along. The character is waiting for me. <laughs> okay, okay. So long, kid. Come on, Jack. The game must be starting about now. All right. I'll turn it on. Now, let's see. And now a message from our sponsor, the Happy Home Sweet Home Real Estate Company. Friends, <laughs> do you have a roof over your head, or have you been roughing it in the La Brea tar pit? <laughs> <laughs> Don't pay the exorbitant prices for houses that are being asked today by our competitors. Don't go out blindly and be hooked by just anyone. Come to us. <laughs> Remember, we are your friends. Jack. Wait a minute, I want to hear this. Listen to this week's special offer. For only $67,000, you can get a beautiful California Monterey-style Quonset hut. <laughs> Gee, they've gone down. Jack, get the ball game. Okay. In a green caravan, there's a lady named Chicken looking the future is bright and bright. No, John, don't leave me. I beg you. I implore you. Please, John, I love you. I love you. See, this sounds interesting. John, if you no longer care for me, think of the children. Think of William, Linda, Milton, Jeanette, Percy, Ellen, Hilda, Stephen, Ken, Peggy, Harriet, Margaret, Richard, Dorothy, and little four-year-old Herbert, our eldest. <laughs> Herbert is only four years old? Jack, the ball game. Oh, I thought she was giving the lineup. <laughs> she looked at my hand and told me my lover was always true. Why can't I get her? Think of it, ladies and gentlemen. A California Monterey style Quonset hot for all this. I wish I knew what station that ball game is on. I don't know why I can't. No. No, John, don't leave me. All day long I do the housework. Not to mention the mending for William, Linda, Milton, Jeanette, Percy, Ellen, Hilda, She Steve. thinks I'm going to wait for Herbert. She's crazy. <laughs> I must find the ball game. But I'll go there again, because I want to believe I can see the way she shakes her tambourine. Oh, what's the matter? I can't seem to get it. Hiya, Jackson. Hello, everybody. Hey, hello, hello, Phil. Yeah. Phil, sit down a minute, will you? I'm trying to get the ball game. Hey, Phil, you haven't forgotten our, about our bet, have you? Of course not. Uh, how much did you bet, Jack? Well, it wasn't money. You see, Phil has St. Louis, I have Boston, and the winner gets to kiss Betty Grable. Uh, what about the loser? He holds Harry James. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, if Jack wins, who's going to hold Betty Grable? Don't be funny. Now, sit down, Phil. Maybe I can get the game now. No, I'm sorry, Jackson, but I can't stay. You see, I just dropped in to invite you to a little stag party we're giving for Frankie, my guitar player. He's getting married. Frankie's getting married? Sure. <laughs> well, who's he marrying, Phil? Well, that little girl who plays the harp in my band. Gee, imagine Frankie getting married. I didn't even know they were serious. I know he went out with her once. Well, that's what did it. When he brought her home, her father was standing on the front porch with a clarinet, and Frank thought it was a shotgun. <laughs> Well, that's a logical mistake. Uh, don't rush off, Phil. Sit down and listen to the game. Will Sorry, you? Jackson, I got to run along. I'll see you at the party. Okay, but I'll uh, I'll get there a little late. I'm on Charlie McCarthy's program today. Okay, so long, everybody. Oh, goodbye, goodbye, Phil. So long, Phil. Give my regards to Alice. Alice, Alice, and Miss Keith. Where were they? Where were they going? Now be quiet, and we'll hear the game. The gypsy. <laughs> Oh, for heaven's sake. If you buy one of our lovely homes for $67,000, you'll have room for the whole family, including William, Linda, Milton, Jeanette, Percy, <laughs> Ellen, Hilda, Stephen. Oh, John. John, what's come over you? You've changed so. You were never like this until we moved into this California Monterey-style Quonset hut. <laughs> There's something wrong with this radio. Hey, what's that? 
And here we are in the third inning of this very crucial first World Series game. That's it. That's it. I've got it. A hush falls over the crowd. The count is two and three. And here comes the pitch. It's a long drive out to left field. Williams is going back. He can't get it. It's a hit. And Greenberg's on third. <laughs> Greenberg? That was last year's game. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, Greenberg's on third. The bases are now loaded. And coming up to bat is the gypsy. <laughs> the gypsy? In a green Oh, this is all mixed up. I believe I'll read about it in the paper. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to say a few words about the USO fundraising drive for 1947. The war is not yet over for 200,000 veterans still in our hospitals, to say nothing of the men sweating out their discharges, the troops overseas, the teenage soldiers away from home for the first time. The USO has served them well, and it uh, has been a big responsibility, and it will be ahead for next year. Let's continue to support our veterans by giving generously to the USO through your community chest, or your local USA, uh, USO campaign. Thank you. Jack, we'll be back in just a moment, but first, here is my good friend, F.E. Boone. At 58, American. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco, and in a cigarette, it's the tobacco that counts. Independent tobacco experts, auctioneers, buyers, and warehousemen really know tobacco. For example, Mr. Herbert T. Highsmith, independent tobacco buyer of Robertsonville, North Carolina, has bought and sold tobacco for 15 years, he said. Season after season, I've seen the makers of Lucky Strike buy quality tobacco, fine tobacco with real flavor, smooth, ripe, and mild. So for myself, I pick Lucky's. I've smoked them for 15 years. Quote, Season after season, I've seen the makers of Lucky Strike buy quality tobacco, unquote. Yes, year after year, independent tobacco experts like Mr. Highsmith can see the makers of Lucky Strike consistently select and buy that fine, that light, that naturally mild tobacco. Fine, light, naturally mild tobacco. Yes, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. L-S-M-F-T, L-S-M-F-T. L-S-M-F-T. Yes, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. The famous tobacco auctioneers are on tonight's programmer, Mr. F.E. Boone of Lexington, Kentucky. At 60, down a bit, at 60, American. Uh, Mr. L.A. Speed Riggs of Goldsboro, North Carolina. Basil Risedale speaking for Lucky Strike, the cigarette that means fine tobacco. Hello? Oh, my New York call? Yes, yes, I'm ready. Hello? Hello? Yes, this is Jack Benny. Well, what about my offer? No, 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 I can't do it. I can't do it. Fifty dollars is all I... All right, sixty dollars. Okay, it's a deal. Goodbye. Jack, who is that? I just bought the Brooklyn Dodgers. <laughs> This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.